Hello everybody, it's that college football guy here with another video. Yeah, I'm here in uh, Westchester, Ohio. I just, I didn't get, I, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself already. I got started about 1 o'clock in the morning Eastern Time, left upstate New York. I spent, I'm spending the night on the side of the road at a little tech stop on I-84 in um, western New York, just before I got to the Pennsylvania border. Right on the side of the road. So I didn't get much sleep. Couldn't sleep after six hours. Just it, it, traffic going by. I couldn't go back to sleep. So I got up. Started my day. Just finished it a little bit ago. Back here. In, I'm here in Westchester, Ohio. Um, so I'm going to rest here for a little bit. And I'm waiting on the trailer that I can take home. It still isn't here yet. So. And I can't go anywhere anyway, because when I pulled into the yard here, I had 10 minutes left of my 11 hours, so I couldn't go anywhere if I wanted to. So, nice long week, Sunday through Saturday, which means I don't go back out till Monday. Which will be a short week, because they want me back out on Sundays, because I'm one of the few people who likes to do that. But anyway, we're back to another scheduled preview. We did UTSA yesterday about the new additions to the conference. Now we're talking about UAB. UAB, who finished the season 7-6 and six last season. And they're going, another one going from Conference USA to the American. And we're going to compare their non-conference schedule from last season and this season. We'll decide which one's tougher. And we'll go through the schedule from last season and this season. We'll decide which one's tougher. A funny feeling this year's schedule is going to be tougher and the non-cons are going to kind of give it away. Um, but last year's season wasn't exactly easy either. Um... All right, non-conference games from last season for UAB. Home against Alabama A&M at Liberty. Home against Georgia Southern at LSU. One Power Five, two Group of Five, one FCS. A pow the Power Five and one of the Group of Fives on the road. This season's non-conference schedule. Home against North Carolina A&T at Georgia Southern home against Louisiana, and finishes up at Georgia. One Power Five, two Group of Five, one FCS, one Power Five on the road, Power Five's on the road, and one of the two Group of Fives is on the road. LSU's a great program, but they're not Georgia. <laughs> so, yeah, I gotta give the edge to this. I gotta say this season's non-conference is tougher. Um, they're playing Georgia Southern on the, it was Liberty as a neutral, as a game last year, Alabama named North Carolina and T it's, but I'm still picking this season's not, this season's non-conference is tougher. Now that last season's entire schedule. All right, here we go. Home against Alabama A&M. They won 59 to nothing at Liberty lost 21 to 14 home against Georgia Southern won 35 to 21. Then they get the bye. Three games in your bye week. You come out of the bye week at Rice. And you lost 28-24. to 24. That was surprising to me. Home against Middle Tennessee State, 141-14. Home against Charlotte, 134-20. to 20. At Western Kentucky, lost 20-17. to 17. At Florida Atlantic, lost 24-17. to 17. Home against UTSA, lost 44-38 to 38 in double overtime. Home against North Texas, 141-21. At LSU, lost 41-10. At Louisiana Tech, 137-27. And then they were in the Bahamas Bowl against Miami, Ohio from the MAC, and won 24-20 to finish the season at 7-6. This season's schedule. Home against North Carolina a &T, At Georgia Southern. Home against Louisiana. At Georgia. And they start off conference play after going on the road to Georgia at Tulane. That's a back-to-back -back for you. Home against USF at UTSA. Home against Memphis. Then they get the bye. So you had three before the bye and nine after last year, which explains why the fact you know after you were two and one before the bye and five and five after it. Um, now they got eight games before the bye, and it's all their tough ones are early. At the end of the season, they have the bye week. Home against the FAU after the bye, at Navy, home against Temple, at North Texas. The North Texas game could be tricky for them. But after the bye, it actually lightens up. 
So hopefully, for their sake, there's not that many major injuries. But, I mean, of the five, in a five-week run, except you have two games in front, two games behind, USF, who's 1-11 in the middle. But at Georgia, at Tulane, at, to US, at Texas San Antonio, and home against Memphis in four out of five games. That's that is a brutal run for UAB. I mean, oof, wow. So, but I need this to say, I think this season's schedule is tougher. Now we're gonna do a comparison here. I'm gonna do the comparison here for everybody I like to do for the the true comparison for which is tougher. Let's compare the the road games from last season and this season. Road games last season at Liberty, at Rice, at Western Kentucky, at Florida Atlantic at LSU, at Louisiana Tech. This season, at Georgia Southern, at Georgia, at Tulane, at Texas San Antonio, at Navy, at North Texas. I think this season is tougher. But why don't you all let me know what you think down in the comments. So thanks everybody for watching the video. If you haven't done it already, please smash the like button, hit the thumbs up, it helps with the algorithm, helps the video be seen by more people. Comment on the video. Three questions in this one. One, do you think last season's non-conference game, last season's non-conference games was tougher, or is this season's non-conference games tougher? Question two, last season's schedule or this season's schedule? Which one's tougher? Question three, Alabama, UAB went seven and six last year. And if memory serves correct, I could be wrong, but Trent Dilfer, I believe, is the new head coach at UAB. I could be very well wrong. I apologize if I am. I'm doing it off the top of my head and I'm very, very tired. I'm almost no sleep. So I apologize if I'm wrong. But with a new head coach and in this conference with this schedule, seven and six last year. So let's go through the games here. This is the schedule preview, not a prediction. But let's just do a little rough look here. Home against North Carolina A&T. They should win that. At Georgia Southern, should win that. Home against Louisiana I don't know. At Georgia, that's an L. At Tulane, that's an L. Home against USF, that's a win. At UTSA, that's an L. Home against Memphis, that's an L. So the eight games beforehand are four and four. So you have to win three of the next four. That'd be seven and five. Home against FAU, at Navy, home against Temple, at North Texas. Do they have a shot at finishing seven and six or better? I'm, this is rough for me. I haven't done the full prediction videos yet because those will be done right before the season starts. And that's going to be basically I'm going to pick a conference and go through everything on there about each team, who left, who's coming back, returning production, what your schedule is. And then we're going to predict your schedule for every team. I'm going to go, you know, wins and losses for every team, and then I'm going to predict at the end of it, at the end of the, end of the conference is done, I want to predict the conference championship game and who's going to win that. But that's going to be, you know, closer to the start of the season because it's got to be the Baylor King. I know you comment coming on all of these, so forgive me for being very tired and not remembering right now, but don't we have one more transfer portal window opening up? One more just before the start of the season? Let me know down in the comments, guys, because <laughs> He's on par, just incredibly smart with all this stuff. Um, so, and anybody else knows, please let me know down in the comments. So, um, let me, like I said, let me know if you think that Alabama UAB has got a shot of getting as good a record as last season or better. And also, I should say this was, there's a rumor going around. And it started by some AAC fans that said that when the AAC gets poached by the ACC, when it implodes, which or when it, when it teams leave, which that's going to happen, that the that the American will be fodder for the teams they're going to pull from. Yeah, and that the Mountain West will be one of the teams they're looking for. I'm like, oh, like Boise State that you tried to poach in 2020 when you told them to be a football-only member, approached them again, off-key rumor is he approached them again about coming and joining the American. But the fact is they told me that it's all in or nothing because they tried doing it in 2020. So they went to the WAC 
it was FCS, so that was out. They went to the West Coast Conference, and they went to the Big West about their Olympic sports. And both of them turned down Boise State because of travel. It's too far. Because they're not Power 5 universities. They're not even major group of five conferences. They don't get any te- that much television money. So travel expenses are actually a realistic thing. And you need to be very regionally based in those smaller conferences. So they got turned down. But somebody told me the fact, oh, Boise State's going to bolt once the, uh, the Pac-12 is going to raid the Mountain West. And Boise State's going to leave to go to the American. I'm like, no, they're not. They've already tried this before. They try to do this and didn't work. And plus, on top of that, the Mountain West gives them bonus money above what everybody else gets. They don't... Everybody else, when they have their TV contracts, you get your money. The the Mountain West case, it's $4 million a year. You kick back 10% of the conference to cover day-to-day operations of the conference. So $400,000 goes back to the Mountain West conference itself. So you're making $3.6 million. Boise State's deal, they don't have to kick back the $400,000. They get more bonus money... And they have the Bronco Network, which they've earned extra millions a year from that. One of the deals for them being in the AAC deal last time was they're not going to get the bonus money and the Bronco Network money gets put into the pool for everybody in the American. They're like, okay, I get to keep the $4 million. I made $2 million off of Bronco Network. They basically made almost as much money Actually, with the TV run, it was slightly more than what the American members made. If you, after, if you since you count in the fact that they're seven million a year, but they had to kick back seven hundred thousand of the conference that puts them at six point three. Boise State actually made more, and now you're going to ask them to go over there and make less. It doesn't make any sense to them. They did it on there because of the fact of more money coming in, and for them it didn't make any sense because if the money's even, it's better exposure. Yeah, but the travel costs. Because it's going to cost, and they couldn't find a home. It just it wasn't going to work. Boise leaves and goes to the American. They're going to be complete idiots for doing it. Because I would laugh if Boise leaves to go to the American, and then Pac-12 schools come into the Mountain West, and Boise's got no home to come back to. But then again, San Diego State, if the Pac-12 fails, and they can't get in the Pac-12, they may choose to go to the American too. That's also in the rumors. I don't think Pac-12 schools, I mean, schools from Mountain West are going to the AAC or the AAC schools are going to the Mountain West. I don't see either one of them happening, but that's neither here nor there. So thanks, everybody, for watching the video. Like I said, like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it already. I'm, I'm I'll just past 400 subscribers, on the way to 500, slowly but surely on the way to 1,000. And... If you ever subscribe to the channel, thank, channel, thank you for doing so. And please remember to hit the, the bell, the notifications bell. It lets you know when I post a video. I try to post one every single day. Sometimes it's multiple. Sometimes life gets in the way and I can't do any, unfortunately. Um, like I'm either in the middle of nowhere with bad signal or problems at the house, which unfortunately, that's life. Um, next video I post will be, is going to be at the house because I don't want to do one early in the morning. Then again, I might. I might do one just before I leave the yard and then go home from there. We will see how it goes. I got another schedule preview unless something else in college football breaks since it's the weekend. I doubt it. But we'll see. So thanks, everybody, for watching. Have a great Friday. And I haven't said before, if you don't watch the other videos, have a great weekend. Please be safe and please be good to each other.